until I accomplish this other goal. I am not buying a new car until I accomplish this other goal. So let's get back to pre-planned spending. Let's get back to the word budgeting. Budgeting means, presupposes that I have a hierarchy of needs and it is most effective when I can look at a written list of what I spend money on. We mentioned food earlier. What about housing? There's housing needs, right? Now the housing needs is not just the four walls. Under your housing needs, there's electricity, there's utility, there's your water bill. In the modern life we live, our ability to communicate ranks also very high. So how much do I spend, how much do I need to be spending on my cell phone bills? How many ancillary expenses do I have tied to my cell phone bill that is not a necessity? Is entertainment a necessity? Which is more important? You get to make these decisions, right? And one of the things I learned, there's a, one of my mentors, Rudy. I learned tremendous amount from Rudy and his wife. Rudy and his wife basically went from average blue collar folks to having a seven figure net worth because they became radical in how much they were investing for retirement. The decision they made to radically increase. I mean, Rudy and his wife decided that 50% of their income would go towards their retirement accounts, period. The first 50% of their income would go towards retirement. And in a decade, a decade and a half, less than a decade and a half, he had transformed his net worth. They had transformed their net worth because they ranked saving for retirement at the very top of their list. And they made the sacrifice to allocate 50% of their income towards that need. I'm not saying you should do that, but witnessing what Rudy and his wife did really challenged and inspired and motivated me to say, wait a minute, are you telling me that this much change can happen in my finances if I pre-plan my retirement saving rate? And that's basically what it is. You see, because they chose to allocate 50% of their income towards retirement, it meant all other needs had to be squeezed in into the remaining 50%. You don't have to do that. You might choose to say, my retirement savings will take the first 20% of my income or it will take the first 25% of my income or the first 15%. You get to decide. That is the beautiful thing about pre-planning your spending. Pre-planned spending, budgeting also helps us to eliminate wasteful spending. You see, when I waste a dollar, an after-tax dollar that I have earned, I am essentially wasting the time it took me to earn that dollar plus 
the taxes I have paid on that dollar. If I waste a thousand dollars, what I have essentially done is I have wasted the time it took for me to earn that thousand dollars and to pay the tax, the after tax, because the thousand dollars I spend is after I have paid the taxes on that thousand dollars. So if my tax rate is 18%, then that's 18% of a thousand plus the thousand, right? So I've actually wasted $1,180, the time it took me to earn that much. If I spend duplicative spending, okay, this concept of duplicative spending, uh, I'll give you a good example, very good example. Yeah, let, let's not think a bit of it as wasteful. We could think of it as duplicative spending and or uh, impulsive spending. Now, remember I used the term and or impulsive spending. I'm headed to work right now and I have my cup of coffee with me. I brewed that cup of coffee at home. I had my caffeine fix before I left home and I have a mug of coffee here that satisfies my caffeine addiction. Now, you compare on a monthly basis the difference between brewing my coffee at home and buying my coffee. Oh, by the way, if you're going to buy your coffee, buy your coffee at McDonald's. I'm a McDonald's shareholder. When I initiate my position in Starbucks, I will gladly encourage, recommend that you purchase your morning coffee at McDonald's or Starbucks. So let's get back. I was just being sarcastic there. Let's say, just, just very quick example. It costs me 35 cents for my cup of, cup of coffee that I brew at home. And if I was buying my cup of coffee at uh, McDonald's, it would cost me $2.35. This is just an example, okay? That $2 difference, if I do that twice a day, uh, sorry, twice, uh, for, sorry, uh, $2 a day, and I do that five times a week, that's $10. That's $10 a week times, oh, let's say uh, 45 weeks is my routine. That is $450 savings. David Bach wrote a book, Automatic Millionaire, and he talks about the latte factor. He's not just talking about coffee. It's the principle. He's using coffee as an example. So I just showed you